Hey everybody, we're going to do a little demo today on a very simple project idea which is turning a circle, which we've got here, into a sphere or try to make it look three-dimensional like it's a, a ball that has a light source and a, a counteractive shadow area. So what we're going to do, you're going to trace your circle on your watercolor paper like this. You're going to pick out a color that you want. I have chosen red. You can see I've got red here. I've got my brush that I'm working with, medium size. And then of course I've got my cup of water here. And what you're going to do to start out is just simply take, well there's a couple different directions you can go. Actually let me start out by kind of wetting the circle. So I'm using my brush and I'm just painting around the edge. I'm adding a little bit of water by itself to the page. I know it's going to be hard to see on the camera. The water though is being absorbed into the paper and what this is called just a loaded brush meaning that the, the brush has no paint and I'm just literally taking water. I'm dipping the brush into the water and just wetting that surface. Notice that I'm going around the edge of the circle pretty carefully and the reason for that is I don't want the paint to spill over the edge of the uh, ball that I'm creating. And if it goes over a little bit, if it's not perfect, that's fine. Now I've taken my paint. Now here's where the fun happens. And I'm just kind of spreading it around a little bit. And then I'm using my brush to try to control where the paint goes. So it's really just kind of using the brush to push around the edge of the ball. So I've wet the paper first but you can just go in directly and start painting. Now what I'm doing is I'm leaving a lighter area here. That area is going to be the light source. So if we have an imaginary ball that's sitting outside and the light source is coming in this direction. This side down here will be the opposite side, which is a little bit of dark. So the rather than laying the rather than laying the um, darker paint along the edge of the ball in a flat line, which is kind of common kind of mistake a lot of people do, the shadow will actually curve slightly. So it also kind of reminds me of painting a planet. Like if you can imagine area, space, atmosphere, and we've got this red planet, something like Mars I'm creating here. And I'm just adding a little bit of red to my brush. And then painting around the edge. A little bit like that still leaving this area right here to be untouched. The white of the watercolor paper that's showing through is going to be the light source. Like that. Okay. Naturally it's going to bleed into that area and you can kind of help it along a little bit. Now if you have a hair dryer you could speed the process of drying up a little bit, run it over that, but I'm just going to let it dry. I'm going to wait for it and then come back over it with maybe a dry brush. While we're waiting, I'm going to take another color because why not? Let's say I got some burnt sienna here. Just to review, notice how little paint I'm putting out on the pay on the palette here. I'm just using cardboard. Working outside today because it's very nice, so I don't have my normal studio equipment with me. That's okay. Watercolor is a great art process to work on outdoors because it's easy to carry the paper around. So now I've loaded my brush with burnt sienna, which is sort of a brown color, and I'm adding that. To the edge. So what's happening is the brown and the red are mixing together and sort of creating a 
rust color. So we really are creating a Mars here, aren't we? Sort of a oxidation look. And you can decide how light or dark you want this to be. You are the expert, as Bob Ross says. So everyone's painting style is going to be different, even if you've never painted before and you're feeling that you're feeling very amateurish right now, that's okay. I promise you, you will develop a style and it will come out naturally. This is looking pretty good, actually. So I've got my uh, darker area that's rounded on the bottom. And then again, imagine a light source coming down here, like the sun or a lamp or something like that which is creating a, a light area. And the goal is to gradually fade it as we go down to the edge. Some people might have black in their kit, so you could add in a little bit of black to the edge and really accentuate it. Throughout the course of the class, I'm gonna encourage you not to use black uh, too much because it tends, especially with watercolor, even more than acrylic and oil, it tends to flatten the paintings out. I think it works better if you can let the watercolor be a lighter medium, which is the way that it is, and then you can um, work with mixing colors, because when you mix colors, remember, they automatically get darker. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking my brush, I cleaned it off with my water, I'm drying it on the edges, okay? So it's actually a pretty much of a dry brush at this point. It's still a little bit wet, but not too wet. I'm just going to kind of smear it around and smooth it out a little bit. And if you if you don't like the white area being such a highlight, you can take the brush and pull it in a little bit like that. You can take the water. Now I'm just I wet the brush and I'm just playing with it. So I don't want it to be completely white, but I want it to be very, very light overall. Okay, it's starting to look pretty good. So now it's like a back and forth kind of thing. I'm gonna take, now I added the brown, mixing it with the red. I just want it to be a little bit darker. Okay, like that. If you want to go even a darker le uh, below that, you're probably going to have to let the paint dry completely, which could take an hour or more, depending on where you are. If you're out in the sun, it'll be faster. And then let it dry completely, and then go another layer on top of it. Although I'm getting a, a pretty dark effect here. And you notice the paint just sort of does its own thing. And, and part of watercolor painting is just getting used to that. The water's going to slide around the page. It's going to do its own thing going to have a mind of its own, and that's completely okay. I personally think the watermarks, the sort of dripping effects, that stuff works really well. If we didn't want it, we'd probably do acrylic and oil, right? Okay, so that's probably where I'm going to stop for right now, um, because I'm trying to get this video in one take. I'm going to probably take a picture of it and maybe share later. But for this video, this is where I'm going to leave it at. You can see kind of where it's going. So maybe do one, two, three of these and um, see which one you like the best. Experiment with different colors. The other thing that you can do, pick another color. Maybe uh, if you have a warm color, maybe go with a cool color. So now I'm taking Prussian blue, which is a pretty dark blue royal blue, navy blue. See how little I've got there? And I'm just going to paint around the edge, going up to the edge. Probably if I was smart, I would let this dry completely, which I'm not doing. So I'm going to get a blurred effect. If it was dry, the two things wouldn't blend together like what they're doing. The red is blurring into the outer edge a little bit. But you know what? I'm also getting some kind of cool watercolor effects going on. And 
And most people are a little bit afraid of sort of abstract art or abstract painting. But once you let go of that trepidation, you can really do some cool stuff this semester by letting the paint make abstract elements. All paintings have a little bit of abstraction in them. So as I tell people, don't fight that and then let the abstract take over sometimes. Hopefully you've got a nice day like I do today. You can go outside and play around. If you paint in the sunlight, I'm in the shade, but if you paint in the sunlight, your paint will dry a lot quicker. And watercolor does have a drying time element to it that you've got to got to account for. So sometimes you paint, you let it dry, and you come back and you work on it a little bit more. I personally, I'm, I'm a big fan of working that way. I have a short attention span. So I like to paint, work, leave it out a little bit, come back in an hour, and finish it up. So I'm going to stop there just to give you the idea. You can see where we're going with this. If I wanted to add another layer of darkness, I would let this dry completely and then maybe do some uh, dry brush without a lot of water on top of that and really build the layers up. Okay? Thanks for your time today. Have fun painting, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you're coming up with.